You've heard of jet lag. That tired feeling after travel. Ah, uh, so tired. Penny Nest Traveler has written dozens of articles about it. I've even written an article about it. I'm Paul Brady, and I'm the articles editor at Condé Nast Traveler. I want to compile a definitive guide on how to beat jet lag, so I'm going to call up as many experts as I can to answer my questions. Hello. Hello. Hey, how's it going? Is that Dean? Hello. Hi, it's Paul. So to start it off, what are some of the symptoms of jet lag? So jet lag really is sort of just feels like if you had a bad night's sleep and you wake up and you just feel groggy, feel really nauseous. Sometimes jet lag is, I can barely keep my eyes open, but I have all the energy in the world. I wish I could sleep. Mm, me too. But why is that? Like, why are you so exhausted? There are kind of two parts of jet lag. One part of jet lag is the resynchronization of your internal clock to your new behavioral schedule. Basically, there's a 24-hour clock in the brain that is influencing all of our behaviors. These are clocks that are found in every living organism on the planet Earth that's ever been studied. A few people have mentioned circadian rhythms. Is that the same thing as an internal clock? A circadian rhythm is anything in your body that repeats itself about once a day. And we call it a circadian clock because it's circa, which means about, and dia in about a day. Right, okay. How is all that related to jet lag? If you're traveling six time zones, well, you're gonna be going to sleep six hours later, and you're gonna be awake six hours later. All these things have shifted six hours. The timing of your meals, when you have to be active. We call this circadian misalignment. Interesting. So pretend I'm like five years old. How would you explain this to me? It's like you're on a swing and you see your friend next to you and you're like, I'm going to sync up with her. So you start moving your legs and you go through this period of adjustment before you sync up. Your body does something similar. Okay, so how long does it take your body to adjust to a new time zone? It usually takes you like a day per hour you're shifting to adjust. Wow, okay, so if you're traveling New York to Tokyo, that's... 13 hours, it would take you 13 days to fully adjust? I mean, what if you're somebody like, I don't know, like a professional athlete and you don't have that kind of time? Well, you'd have to ask an athlete to see how they feel. <laughs> okay, fair. Would you ever arrive, say, like a week ahead of a big match? It's not possible, especially when you go all the way to the final. I had a few times that, you know, having to fly all, all night following and then playing the next day, imagine a completely different part of the world. Were there times when you felt like you were being affected by jet lag on the court? When you have to play a night session around 7 p.m. and it is like 4 a.m. in the morning for you, you're playing basically against the jet lag. So how do you get over jet lag quickly? First thing for me was always straight off the plane, doesn't matter how tired I was to go for a run or a bike ride. If I go for a run, that helps out a lot. You get out in the sunlight, walk around. Why does going outside help with jet lag? You have clocks in your liver, you have clocks in your spleen, you have clocks in your brain. In order for them to work in concert with each other, this central clock remains synchronized to the outside world through regular exposure to light. Evolutionarily, you're looking at sunlight. Okay, I think I'm getting it. The body's biological clock is out of sync with the sun and needs to adjust to a new light schedule. Let's back up. Can I do anything before the trip to prevent jet lag? My graduate advisor used to shift his clock before he would go places. So he would do pretty lengthy manipulations to change his schedule so that it would be similar to where he was going. So when he got on the flight and got to wherever it was, he could just hit the ground running and maximize his time there. So your advice would be you have to adjust your schedule ahead of time. How does that work? Uh, light in the evening causes what we call a phase delay. It basically makes things happen later. So for example, if I'm traveling from California to New York, you know, I want my system to move earlier. So I want it to advance. Then you need light in the morning. If I wanted to delay, I don't want light in the evening. And so the timing light very much matters. Okay, that seems hard. Is there anything I can do on the plane? There are other aspects of jet lag that are very much fed into by the actual process of travel. Dehydration, you get on the plane, greasier meals, uh, with lots of new best friends who may not share the same you know, spatial concerns that you do. I always travel with a silk pillowcase or hypoallergenic compression socks. Fully wash your face. Give yourself a little mini facial, treat it like a, a trip to the spa, and you'll feel better. <laughs> How much water do you need to drink? I probably go through a gallon and a half of water a day. Yeah, the recommendation is about eight ounces per hour. Should you drink alcohol? Try to stay away from the mini bar on the plane. Why 
is that? It's alcohol is very dehydrated. It causes a, what we call a diuresis. You'll feel the altitude more. You might fall asleep for a long time. And, and uh, you, know, you want to get up and move around a bit. Girl ain't going to sleep without a glass of wine. So... <laughs> what should you eat? I usually recommend the low sodium meal on airplanes and that's because it's not going to make you feel bloated as much. If it comes out looking like a TV dinner, skip it. But sometimes they do have like a salad and it's, it is nice to have fresh fruit and vegetables. I guess what I would recommend is try to eat on a normal schedule as much as possible and then slowly try to transition to the new schedule that you're going to. Should you nap when you land? Don't nap because I think we're all guilty of a, of a 30 minute nap turning into a four hour snooze fest. Sleeping for 30 minutes, forget about it. If I go down for 30 minutes, I'm down for nine hours. Do not take a nap or you're dead. <laughs> Is there any technology that can help fight jet lag? One thing that we can do to get over jet lag faster is get light at the right time. Part of my research when I was a grad student, I made an app, it's free, and it relays these schedules of light and dark. So this app will tell you when to seek and avoid light to trick your brain into getting into the new time zone faster. Yes, light is so important. <laughs> There are other devices where you wear goggles kind of on your face while you're awake and it increases the amount of blue light, which is um, a stronger stimulation to the system and it increases that during the day. Can you get jet lag without traveling? There's this idea called social jet lag where an individual during the weekend will stay up later or on a free day stay up later than they would on a work day. So we do it you know, on a weekly basis almost. And so you don't have to travel somewhere to get the jet lag. The most dangerous day of the year to drive, or you know, the, the day you'll have the highest likelihood to die, is the Monday after the daylight saving where you spring forward. Well, that's troubling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> after all this, I still wanted to know, are there any benefits to jet lag? Just as like a day-to-day -day life thing, I'm super religious about my life exposure. Like, even if I'm not traveling, and it's come about for me doing this science. I've I've gotten to the point now where if I get light at night, especially blue enriched light, that's like really cold. I'm like, oh, get that away from me at night. What have you learned from jet lag? You could almost just say, I know it's gonna happen, so I'm just gonna try and make the flight as comfortable as possible. And that's the biggest takeaway. Embrace the jet lag. It allows you to see a city in a new light. If you're not normally a night person, you can take the nightlife in. If you're not normally a morning person, maybe you'll see the sunrise in a beautiful place. The most important thing to remember is that this is your body's natural response to a very unnatural thing, like flying halfway around the world in 14 hours.